I'm Scott L. Miller. It's the 11th of April, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. It is Tuesday, and today I'm going to hunker down in the office and answer questions for you guys because I've got some questions coming in and it's a great way to uh, use the later in the day light uh, to catch up. So after the bump, we're going to get straight into answering some viewer questions. <laughs> There is a life I lead in this city Hurry in to cup my tea I can take what I need to get by All right, welcome back to a little bit of uh, working from my office, if you will. And we have the new quilt up behind me. It's not, I wish it went all the way. What I really need is two quilts. I need another one over here and cover more space, but it's so beautiful and the colors are so great. And uh, when I have a difference, I'm on the GoPro right now, right? Which will render it pretty nicely, but it's going to look much better when I have uh, the Olympus and I'm able to like make it like a bunch of the background. I have a lot of work I want to do here in the office as far as making it into a studio. This is the first little piece, giving a little bit of color on the wall, a little bit of sound deadening. I think it's going to be nice and we're using natural light right now. Hopefully this works out pretty well. It's still during the day and I've got the windows and I'm enjoying a little bit of air conditioning because it's like 100 degrees today. So still hiding in the office. And with this, I think we're going to be pretty well caught up on the show. So I'll be able to spend a little bit more time making things for you. Uh, but so I'm just going to get right into answering some questions because that is our topic today. It's just answering questions. And we've got more from Jerry Goble, who's just getting in there and asking a lot of questions that I'm able to answer. Some people ask a lot of questions that I'm not able to answer. So I'm sorry that you don't get the recognition, um, but work a little bit harder at finding ones that I can answer. All right, let's jump in. I'm gonna read the first one. Jerry says, you say there's an easy process, but it seems complicated. Okay, she's got me there. In another video, you said you knocked on the door of a house you liked and asked them to sell. My partner and I are coming there uh, in January for a couple weeks to look for property. So January, that's, that's most of a year away. We were planning to drive the coast and look at every beach, exactly what Paul and I did, uh, walk all the neighborhoods and knock on the doors of houses we really like, what Paul and I did. Spanish is his native language, so he was going to do all the talking. That makes it a lot easier. We, we didn't have that. Uh, but still, he's Cuban, not Nicaraguan, so I imagine they're going to still gringo tax him. You might get away. I, I'm just going to cut in real quickly. You might get away there. There is a uh, significant Cuban population here in Nicaragua, and Nicaraguans mostly know that Cuba is a kindred country and not a rich foreign country. Um, so if he's able to pass as Cuban, uh, you might be good. If he passes as a Cuban American, then you're going to get gringo tax for sure. So that's, there's a big depends there. But if, if he really would never be suspected as coming from anywhere except Cuba, you might be all set. There, there's a lot of, um, um, cross communications and solidarity with Cuba here. Um, and so, uh, it, it's not uncommon to see, uh, actually Cuban refugees or Cuban, uh, hopefuls who come here to Nicaragua looking for, uh, a better life just because Nicaragua has so many more opportunities, but it's a much smaller country. So, um, there, there, you can only have so many Cubans come here before it would become a problem. And hiring a lawyer or service. Well, I don't think they're going to walk every neighborhood for us and try to convince someone to sell. So what is the best approach? All right. So that's, these are great questions and this is tough. Um, I think I meant by simple, the, the process is simple. Knock on doors and ask people. There isn't some complicated process. That said, that's still a lot of work. It's just not complicated. Um, what you're going to want to do is something similar to what we did. And you're describing a lot of it here, driving around and looking at all the beaches. It's really hard to get someone to do that for you. Of course, I would be happy to do that for people. But if I did, the degree to which that's valuable is going to be limited, not a bad thing, but it's not going to be the same as you doing it. And it would not be the cheapest thing, right? If, you know, someone or a group of people wanted to pay my expenses to go up and down the coast, I could take cameras, get a bunch of information on the beaches, show a lot of the beaches, show the houses from the beach, the road behind and get like, things that make sense to, to understand what the beach town is like, you know, put it in the window of the car and drive the beach. You, you know, you can see what we did in Las Panitas just a couple days ago. Uh, now that was super busy, but you know, mount a camera to the windshield instead of holding it like I did in that, go the length of the beach and really get a feel for that. And then walk the beach with a camera. Sure. Those things would be, um, a potential starting point to 
allow you to eliminate a bunch of places you may just look at and go, whoa, whoa, not what I want. Like this distance from a town, rule it out. This place has no houses currently, rule it out. This place has a city feel, rule it out. Here's the the 10 beaches I'm actually interested in. That would be an interesting starting point. Uh, we didn't have that, right? Paul and I literally ran to the south and just worked our way north going beach, 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 beach. Every so often we would skip one for, you know, be like, oh, it's too similar to this other. We're just going to move on. But in general, we hit nearly every beach and got a really good feel. And it worked out well for us. Uh, we went to San Juan del Sur, which is where he thought he was going to want to be. And immediately within three hours, he was like, let's just leave. Let's just not even, you know, we're giving up our hotel rooms. We're losing our money on the hotel. It's not worth staying. It's a waste of our time. And we immediately drove on because it that's all it took to get the feel that this wasn't the vibe we wanted, even though it's a beautiful town. Um, and I love it a lot. Uh, and we went to a lot of beaches and said, this is okay, this is okay. And we found a few that we liked a bit, Pochamil, Boquita. Uh, we went through and we we're like, oh, this is really nice. This is really nice. We found some actual places we we're really interested in, found some houses, some hotels. Um, none of them were like, this is perfect, but we found lots of like, this could work. This would be okay. And we talked to some locals and we, we, we toured some places. We would show up in the middle of the night, knock on the door and the security guard would be like, oh yeah, let me show you around. And, and if we were really interested, he's like, I'll call the owner right now. Right. Like, cause they want the places to be, to be bought. They don't want them to sit idle. No one wins if they're idle. Um, and, uh, so we talked to some, we got some prices. We, we had some real conversations, um, including in San Juan del Sur, uh, and worked all the way up. But when we got to Las Panitas, we instantly said, Whoa, we're done. This is it. Um, we, not quite. We actually went farther and came back and we're like, Nope, no need to, to keep going. This is clearly it. And then what we did is we had a crew um, who were not a real estate crew, but they had some real estate experience located in Managua. And we said, look, we don't have time. We need you to come back and look at more places. And they came back and knocked on doors and they went into places that weren't for sale and just went, hey, I want to talk to the owner. This place, I think that my, uh, you know, my employer is interested in this place. Would you sell it? And, uh, and ended up getting the place that we have and that we love um, in that way. So that's the process that we did. And, and believe it or not, that's actually a doable process, especially if your partner is Cuban and speaks Spanish fluently. That's going to be way easier. We did have a crew with us when we did it. So when I say we didn't speak Spanish, we didn't. But we did have Nicaraguans with us who were running around and doing things for us. So we had that advantage. Um, but it's even easier for you because, you know, he's not negotiating as a proxy. He's negotiating as you. Uh, but yes, so in a lot of cases, I know this sounds ridiculous, but knocking on doors often works because the majority of places have caretakers if the people aren't there. If the people are there, you're going to knock on the door, they're going to answer the door, and you're going to say, hi, you want to sell your house? Um, and nine times out of ten, they're going to go, yes, make me an offer. <laughs> and uh, when they're not there, there's a really good chance that you're going to have the, the caretaker be there and they will show you the house or get in contact with the owner or whatever. Uh, there are times you won't be able to see a place, but, but by and large, you will be able to. And what we did in some of the, some of the, uh, beaches that we didn't know as well, um, we just went and found people walking the beach who lived there. You know, you'd see them come from a house, be like, oh, and especially if you're not in a touristy area, you know, certain people really seem like they live there. And we just stopped and said, Hey, you know, um, can you tell us what's available on the beach? Can you tell us what price ranges? Can you, can you give us a little bit of backstory? And people were perfectly willing to tell us a bunch of stuff. And so, yeah, I think with two weeks, um, you actually have enough time. Nicaragua is not a big place. You could um, not stay on every beach, but you could get a survey of the beaches and really look at a large number of homes and potentially find the place that you want to be in. Um, when Paul and I did it, we had less than two weeks and we had to go through all of forming a company, um, going through the process of buying a hotel, getting scammed, getting out of it, then going beach hunting without any coordination ahead of time and basically did everything in three days. So uh, now we were here longer, but the actual hunting for a beach village that we wanted to be in, that we had about three days to do that. We were in a bit of a panic. And unfortunately, I didn't have a GoPro while doing it because that was the trip when my GoPro was stolen as we arrived. Um, so it was my only trip I've done of the last 10 years without a GoPro uh, was that those two weeks and or the, that week. And it would have been fantastic to have taken the GoPro around and just gotten shots of everything. Uh, but I was not able to. So unfortunately, well, we lost most of that. But that is the process we did. And that is something you could do on your own. 
for sure. It is also something that um, you could hire a local to do and something that my team would love to do with you. Um, but you don't need us, right? That is, that is certainly something you can do on your own. Do you need a lawyer to do that? No, you don't need a lawyer for that. What you would do um, is do the research on foot, uh, run around and um, find that there's places you're interested in. Once you're at the point where you're like, I'm really seriously interested in this house, then you engage a lawyer and they will verify who the owner is to make sure you're not getting scammed. They will verify that the owner truly owns it and is free and clear. They will um, provide their opinion on whether or not you're getting a good deal. And then they will handle any process for getting the pieces together and making it happen. Um, so you don't need a lawyer at first, but you definitely need them soon. Um, but that's, that's where they would step in in many cases. Now, here in Leon, I work with my lawyer all the time. And often when I'm looking at property, I call my lawyer first because she knows everybody. So there are times that you would work with a lawyer. Um, if you were going to be working in a given beach all the time, you would want to have a lawyer there uh, who may have lots of connections and know all the people. Um, and if there's a place that you can't find the owner for, having a local lawyer is how you're going to track them down. And that's where having um, a centralized lawyer, like I do, uh, being able to reach out and say, I need you to find me a lawyer in this town who's going to know people, they'll be able to in many cases, find those people for you. All right, her second question really relates to the first one, and I think they were on the same uh, article. Um, if I don't know anyone there, and I can't let anyone know that I'm a foreigner, what is the best way to find a beach house or lot to buy? I'm open to any swimmable beach, but I really like this beach area. Uh, she said this in the video about the Malacone in Las Penitas. So that's the Leon uh, North Beaches is what she's looking at. Um, I know you offer a service to go look at property you're interested in. Um, and not trying to do a sales pitch, uh, like you just knocked on the door of the house you all liked and, and asked to buy it, I'd like to buy something right away. Um, and I noticed you walked by an empty lot. Any info on that? Okay, so first of all, all the empty lots that you've seen in my videos of Las Benitas, they are all unavailable, every single one. There's no such thing as an unwanted lot in Las Benitas. That doesn't mean you can't get any. Like I said, everything's for sale. Um, most things are only empty because either someone with plenty of money is holding on to it and for whatever reason absolutely refuses to let anything happen to it. Or in most cases, this is one of those countries where property ownership is very strict. And if you end up with, say, 20 grandkids who all own a little piece of the property, uh, there's no way to sell it unless all 20 will agree to something. And all it takes is one of them holding out and saying, no, 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 I want three times as much as everyone else, and no one can sell, and the property goes undeveloped for decades um, until the, either that person uh, gives up their share, gets bought out, passes on, um, and, and then you try again with the next generation. Uh, it's, a, it's a sad system that it's so easy to end up with undevelopable property in Nicaragua, but that is a thing that happens and we're not the only country that has that problem, but it is a real problem. So don't just look at an empty property and go, well, it's empty, I'm sure. I'm sure I'll be able to buy it, it's worth nothing. And then you find out no one will sell it to you for less than $100,000 because one crazy person out of a group of 20 who are desperate to get a little bit of money for it is like, I don't need money and I don't care about the rest of you. So we're holding out until we get enough that I want to sell it. Um, but no one will put money into developing it because no one actually owns it. It's just split between all these people. And so you can't get it for market value and you can't do anything with it. That, that's a real thing. So everything you're seeing along the beach, if it's empty, there are 20 people actively trying to buy it 24, 7, 365, and they just won't sell. Um, trust me, I know people who've worked really hard uh, to, uh, to, to get, um, those properties and, and no one will even talk to them. So that's, that's often why it is. You'll, you'll actually be much easier in, in almost all cases in Las Panitas. In other beaches, there will be empty spots that you can buy because there's just no buyers. But in Las Panitas, because we are a highly desirable location right outside the city, there's always someone who would buy an empty lot. And quite frankly, I would always buy an empty lot. So you can pretty much be assured that if you've looked at the beach and you see an empty lot that I've walked by, I walked past it because I couldn't buy it. <laughs> I would not show it to you. I would have already purchased it, right? Because I live on that beach and I would want an empty lot on the water. Um, so yeah, there's there's no just simple empty lots. Anything, it, and it doesn't mean you can't get one. It means that if you wanted to get one, you'd have to overcome some really significant obstacles. I would recommend moving into town and being a long-term resident 
in order to facilitate that process. Like it's it's that complicated. I do want to, before we get to some of the other things I want to say, um, I want to buy something ASAP. So I haven't talked to Jerry specifically about this yet, and I will privately, but um, this is, everyone says this, and I've said this in some other videos, it is so common to have this, I want to buy a place before I get there, I need to buy, buy, buy. And yes, the timing is good, and we're going to talk about that shortly. It's also really dangerous to buy before you move, or to buy too early, or to buy too aggressively. Um, it is a really common um, gut reaction coming from North America that uh, something about Nicaragua makes people feel that they need to buy before they live there, here, um, before they've moved, to, to invest in a business before they come, and none of that is recommended. The recommendation is move down, move to the beach you want to be in, and do the process of trying to locate and buy from the place you want to be. That Now, the first piece that we talked about, coming down, doing a survey of the beaches, see what houses are available, get a feel for the area, absolutely do that as soon as possible. Why wait till January? Come down next week, right? Um, but once you've done that, so let's say you do that and you decide that uh, Pochamil is exactly the place you want to be. It's just the distance to Managua that you want. It has the beachfront that you want. You like the way the water is. Great, you want to be in Pochamil. Um, you probably don't want to try to buy remotely. That's going to be very difficult. What you want to do is live in town, get to know locals, get a feel for a lot of things, know what's available, know what, what problems go on in different areas. Because yes, I could go to Potion Mill and help you, and I know Potion Mill a little bit. I have purchased and, and given up a place there. But there's a ton of, oh, you know what? At night, there's this drama that goes on in this neighborhood because this neighbor is only there six months of the year, and it's a huge problem. Those are things you only know by living there. Right, I can tell you now for in Las Penitas, every single place. And you see my videos when we when we drive through. Like that place has been empty too long. This place just put on a new facade. They must be doing something. This person said they were coming back two years ago and never returned. Like knowing those pieces is important, and you only get that by living there. And no amount of me being locally uh, adept is going to assist in that outside of Las Penitas. In Las Penitas, I can do that. But in other places, I know of nobody that we could count on to provide that local type of information, and you're going to potentially want that no matter where you are, city, beach, mountains, any place. Um, I, I completely and universally warn people, buying too quickly is a dangerous thing. Now, of course the prices are good, you're not going to get normally screwed for a life savings or anything like that, but if it if it's, you know, if you have millions of dollars and it doesn't matter at all, whatever, right? But if in any way this is going to hinder you from potentially finding and, and buying the place of your dreams, because remember, there's, you basically have no way to sell anything you buy uh, for many, many years, like decades, think 10, 20 years before you have any reasonable chance to sell without without a huge loss, um, and in some cases, even with a huge loss. Uh, so you really have to think, if I'm buying, I'm planning on keeping this. It's a bit more of a permanent uh, situation than if you were buying in the United States, and you could be like, ah, I'll just find another buyer and move on to the next place. You can try, but the chances that you would just turn a house back over is, is very low. There's There's so many options. The only hope you would have is in taking a bath on it. What's the best way? So your question is, you can't let them know you're a foreigner. Um, on the beaches, you don't always have a choice. Uh, a lot of the beach places only go to foreigners. So that's a possibility that you're going to get gringo price no matter what. Um, but in general, the thing I just said, move into a town, get to know people, and just send out a local that you trust uh, to buy it. Or in a case like us, you know, we have someone, we have multiple people on staff who are Nicaraguan and have no experience outside the country, right? They do, they do not carry a taint of the United States or anything like that. Um, and they can do those things uh, and negotiate as if they're, they're just buying from Managua uh, or whatever. Um, that's the kind of stuff, or hire a lawyer to do that for you, right? That's, um, the difficulty is looking at a house. Um, and, and that's where, uh, you know, we try to go out and do photos and videos and stuff, but not necessarily negotiate as our team uh, in a lot of cases, because uh, you're able to get that info, a certain amount of information, decide this is a place you're really interested in, um, and not trigger the gringo tax because we're just there taking, like, I'm, you know, just a Nicaraguan who's known for doing videos. Uh, then if someone's going to negotiate, you'd often do it through a lawyer. And it's much harder to gringo tax a lawyer because the, the lawyer will be like, I'm not even going to pass this on, right? Give me a legitimate price 
or this conversation's over. But you also have to have a lawyer who's prepared to walk away on your behalf, right? Um, but that's that's kind of what you have to do. You Either you've got to have a team that's doing it or know people. Those are the only ways. And the whole thing is, do you have access to to act like a Nicaraguan or not? That is what the system works on. All right, and her final question. The video has me wanting to ask you so many questions. This is the video, how much is the cost of an acre, price of an acre in Nicaragua? Uh, too many for a comment, but my main two are this. If San Juan del Sur is doing so badly, isn't it a good time to buy when things are cheaper? And two, if I'm driving the coastline and see an empty area I'd like to offer to buy, how do I even find the owner? Well, we kind of addressed part two earlier. You just stop and knock on the door. If they're not there, knock on the neighbor's door, drive into the village and ask around. Um, we've done this exact process in many places, um, in, in beach towns. We've gone to places and said, ah, the owner's not here, but the, but the guard is there. And then they knew enough and we were able to negotiate and decide we didn't want the place. And uh, in other cases, we went into town, found an architect, found a lawyer, and they said, oh, we know lots of places. And they drove us around because everybody wants to show you places. Everybody's out to get a commission. Somebody will uh, do it for a favor to the seller um, and run around. And I know in Las Benitas, uh, just being a local that's there all the time, anytime I'm on the beach for an extended period of time, not if I just go for dinner, uh, someone will show up and be like, ooh, Scott's here. I've got a property I got to show him. And so I'm, I'm constantly being dragged around town to go look at empty lots, old houses, whatever, hotels, people's active houses, absolutely anything people will show to me in the hopes that I will buy it um, or know someone who will buy it. But they're normally like, oh, we think you want another place, right? Because I, I have several and they're just like more and more, you, you know, you, you're going to want it. Um, and so they do that. So that's a way you find out about a lot of things. And you know when they're coming to you that they're desperate, like they're sending people out to try to find you uh, to make a point of selling it to you. So that that tends to be how you can get a good deal as well, the people who are really actively trying to sell, not that not people you have to convince to sell. And um, then the first part, San Juan del Sur is doing very badly. Um, businesses continue to close there. And of course, everyone who works in the real estate market in San Juan del Sur is gonna tell you exactly the opposite because that's how they make their money. Um, is by convincing you that you need to jump on and that there's no deals and trying to get the prices to double what they should be. So that's your big, biggest source of gringo pricing there. Uh, but if you actually go down as a shopper and don't talk to the real estate agents and talk to people with properties, it is fire sale prices. Businesses are going out of business left and right. Everyone's been hit super hard. Um, I don't know how it is this week after Semana Santa, but if it's like up north here, we did okay for Semana Santa, but overall, I think the crowd was light enough I think a lot more businesses are going to close now as they got that. Uh, some always close after Semana Santa because they just hold out to get that last little bit of money. The last thing you want to do is close just before the biggest weekend of the year. Um, and anyone who's going to open will have opened for it, like I said in the video. So you're at your maximum openness during Semana Santa. Afterwards, places that didn't make enough money during Semana Santa, that's when they close. I'm like, I can't, I can't do another month. Um, a lot of places are making that decision. And I think this Samana Santa, from what I saw, while we did pretty well, uh, we also noticed that we had three to 10 times as many people as most of the businesses around us. Uh, and so that's really telling. We did okay at their expense. And I saw the crowds at Sua, same thing happening there. Uh, the Simple and Sua are packed. Every seat taken, standing room only, doing really, really well. That comes at the expense of other places because the number of people we saw on the sand wasn't that high. Uh, and so, and not that it was bad, but it wasn't good. It wasn't as good as I've seen the last couple of years. And so that's, um, that's telling that uh, uh, the crowds are not likely going to be there to support businesses that were clinging on, hoping that big crowds were going to return. And, and often they make enough money during Semana Santa to make it for another uh, two to six months. And if they didn't, they now know they have really no hope of making it to the next bit of the season. And so that's this is a great time to get price, to get uh, a deal because they're they're really acutely aware of how bad it is right now, even though they just did well for a few days. Now that said, maybe San Juan del Sur did much better than the northern beaches did. They don't always track completely together, so maybe things have improved a little bit because of a great Semana Santa there. But my expectation is not that that happened. Um, that is. That's not the, the thing. Um, 
She asks, you know, isn't this the time to buy when things are cheaper? Absolutely. In the general sense, this is the time to buy. What that means is it's been the time to research for the last couple of years, and now is the time to buy. The danger is not in buying at the wrong time, but in buying without doing your research. And so for people like me, yes, I bought during the low time. I started my general research in 2015. I came down and did hardcore research at the end of 2019, all of 2020, made my first purchase in 2021, got out of it, and then made the purchases that I have now in early 2021 to late 2020, so for a period of time. But I had basically two years of nothing but research um, during the time when the, when the market was collapsing. And when it got to the trough, we were ready and moved quickly. We had a business in place. We had a plan in place. We had our house ready to sell. We spent all of 2020. If you watch my old videos, they talk about how in 2020, we were sitting around getting the house ready to sell. And that's something that, so the moment that the time came, we're like, boom, sell the house, get on a plane and we're gone. Every plan was in place. We had already lined up purchasing the place. We already had our staff in country lined up. We were really, really ready with tons of research. You gotta do that before you jump on the good deals or else they're not gonna be a good deal for you. So yes, this is the time to buy, um, but things like, and I don't know why you need to wait till January, but waiting until January to come down to look and do your initial research, I think is a very bad idea if, I mean, I don't know your circumstances, right? You just have no way to come down before then, okay. But really take this to heart, waiting most of a year to start your research when you're in a I need to buy a house ASAP mode is incredibly dangerous because what you want to do is get on a plane as fast as you can. There are only about $150 flights from Texas right now. Get down here, do that initial research, get the feel for what you want, do those things so that from abroad you can do a lot of real serious house hunting knowing which villages you actually like, knowing which cities you actually like, because it's more than just which beach do I like, it's which beach do I like, plus how much do I like the city that's associated with it. I could easily live in a different beach than Las Panitas if it sat 15 minutes outside of Leon, but it's a lot of it for me is Leon. One of the reasons I don't like a lot of the Rivas beaches is because they all only have the small city of Rivas to go to and they're very far away from it. Well, that's a big negative for me. Uh, if Rivas was 10 minutes away, sure, be good enough for me, but it's not. It's really uh, far away. So, uh, and of course, seconds from wrapping up, the camera overheats. Even in a heavily air-conditioned room with no sunlight on the camera whatsoever, it still overheats. And I, you may have noticed I stopped in between each question to give the camera a moment to cool down, and it's still, it's too much. <sighs> Very frustrating. But new camera coming. We'll see how that one does. Uh, but I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. Teasers. Okay, so most important thing is you really don't want to give up the research time because that's so important. You do have time to buy a place. Yes, it's urgent. Get purchasing. If you, whoever you are watching this, are interested in buying a home or business or location or property or whatever here in Nicaragua, this is the time to do it. But I don't recommend skipping your research steps in order to do it. I recommend getting your research moving as quickly as possible, as strongly as you can in order to make that happen. Do your research, but get moving on that. Do not hesitate. Do not delay. Get researching. It's going to take you a while. And when you find the right place, you'll be prepared to jump on it. Quick ad for my company. We are Relocate Nicaragua and we are working to specifically provide these kinds of services that Jerry is asking about in uh, these questions, whether it's uh, helping you look at a specific property. Scott, please go take pictures and videos uh, and, and, and show us uh, that stuff so we can see it from abroad. That's like the simplest thing we do um, to helping you uh, get hooked up with all the right resources for residency, whether investment or retirement. Um, doing exactly what Jerry is is asking, um, going from beach to beach and getting information for you about those places, showing you those neighborhoods. If you can come down, taking you with us and actually going with you and basically doing a tour of any part of the country that you want, right? It could be beaches, could be mountains. It could be showing you both so you can 
understand what makes sense. And even if you want to look at multiple countries, obviously that's a lot more time and work, but we would love to do that. Um, and so uh, if you need someone to take you to Ecuador and Guatemala and Nicaragua and Panama and go to lots of different potential locations and, and figure out how to compare them and figure out pricing and put together what is the value package for you, that is what we are here to do. Um, but we are based in Nicaragua and we are starting here to, to offer either directly or with our partners a complete package of uh, research, actually acquiring a home if that's what you want to do, finding a rental if that's what you want to do, um, coming and learning more uh, to discover if this is the place you want to move and every single thing you need to be able to move and be successful living here in Nicaragua. All right, that's everything for me and the dogs today. Thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. Get down there in those comments. Ask your questions. Leave comments on other people's questions. Just comment on the show. Tell me things you want to know want to, that you want to. I like being able to make shows about questions like that. That's fantastic when people ask like real things I can dig into. And sometimes you guys ask questions that I just don't know the answers to. So I can't make a video on that. But a lot of times you do. And it's, it's a great way for me to figure out what I'm going to make a video on because I really do struggle on day Days when I'm not traveling and I, I, I'm still babying my foot. So this is really helpful to me uh, when you guys have questions and, and projects for me. So thank you so much for that. But if you haven't done so, get down there, say hello. Uh, if nothing else, just say that you found the channel and, and, and introduce yourself. But if you have questions, definitely. And share on social media, Reddit, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. Just get out there, link some episodes. Hey, I like this episode. Hey, you should check this out. Tell your friends, let them know about the show. If you'd like to support us directly, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. It makes a huge difference. It uh, enables things like uh, able to buy the new camera that is on the way that I'm going to be surprising you guys with some new content with. And, and I haven't seen any yet uh, uh, guesses as to what it's going to be. Feel free to put it down there. Um, and feel free to let me know what kind of filming you'd be interested in because because maybe there's things I haven't thought of as well. And as always, I will see all of you tomorrow.